Hello and welcome to CS264 Software Design. This is Lecture 2 and Lesson 3. And in this lesson, we're going to look at how we might interact with C Sharp console applications that have been developed using the .NET framework. In the last lesson, we saw how to use .NET to create a console application, and it created a very simple Hello World application for us, as we see on the column on the left here. Um, but, you know, all it did was print something out. It didn't do any writing of uh, anything more interested in dealing with variables. We couldn't get data into the actual app. So I want to show you how to do that. And um, because once we have that in place, we can write some, some more interesting console based applications that would be sufficient for this particular module. We're not interested in, you know, advanced or fancy UIs at all, you know, because we're mostly focusing on um, class design here. We do, we do need to get stuff data in and out of the program, of course. But before we do that, I want to work through what is actually going on here with this program. Um, so the first thing we're going to look at, uh, we see this use system. So that tells us we're going to be using classes from the system namespace. And namespaces are used to organize code in your C Sharp apps. Namespaces are containers for classes and other namespaces. And it's important to note in these applications that C Sharp statements end with a semicolon. You've used a lot of JavaScript um, in second year um, when you were looking at um, CS230, and JavaScript is very forgiving about semicolons, and Node.js is very forgiving about not, if they're not there. Okay, but you know, C Sharp is particular, so you'll see there's one down here, and we definitely need it. Okay. So um, the next line we see is a namespace my app. And that tells you about the program's namespace. Um, and same as the directory name here. And we use chain brackets then afterwards to organize code, code blocks. Okay, And you've seen this, of course, in your other languages like Java and JavaScript. Personally, I love to place my opening brace in the first line after the declaration. But every time I save, G, uh, save VS Code reformats for me, I could change, I suppose. So I'm sticking with this and putting my brackets on new lines um, it's not my way, and um, I have coding style, and and but you know I can't I can't do much about that. Okay, um, so a sh so a C sharp class. Now then we see a class for our program, a C sharp class. That's a container for data and methods, and that's no different than you would have seen with Java, and if you did any OO JavaScript, you would have seen it there as well. And these methods as functionality to your program. So every line of code that runs in C sharp must be in some inside some class. And here we call it a class program. We don't have to call a program. It's called program. I guess what's important is the fact that it has this method called main here, um, which is allows us to be able to run or execute the program as a console application. So, you know, console apps have this main method and any code inside the main method or the main method block, which is these two chain brackets here, um, will be executed. So you know a little bit about what static methods are. You probably saw this from Java, but we'll do it again in, in a little while. Um, and you probably know what a void method is, and you'll probably get that this is a string, uh, an array of strings called arguments. And it, this is all very similar to, to um, uh, what you would see with Java. So you know, you know, the static methods are not like get, it, get, get it. They're class methods. They're not like getter and setters that are associated with an instance of a class, which is an object. Okay. So console then, the next line was console dot right line hello world. So console is a class that's a member of the system namespace and you know and if we didn't include this using system we'd have to explicitly say system.console and dot right line and in order to write something you know within packages or if, if you want to think about it in the java parlance and um, with namespaces we can just use this dot notation in order to be able to navigate through the actual um, namespaces and that's it so you know the program just looks the exact same you know as, as it would um I just got some comment there and some additional commentary and copy this one if we want to mark we play with it so what i'm interested in doing now is that's looking at these command line arguments so i have changed it a little bit so we can we can um, say hello world and then if there's a command line argument we can actually say hello based on this so you can um, based on the, the, the zero element of the arguments array and we can use this property length um, of arguments, make sure it's not zero if it exists. So this is how we, we manipulate. There's one way to get data into our system. So, you know, what I would do if, you know, you're looking at my notes is just copy this program here, head on over to Visual Studio Code, um, replace this, save it, and run it. And we had Hello World 
that's what we would expect because we had no arguments. So we were interested in if the argument list was greater than zero. So I'm going to hello. Um, I'm going to create an argument after the .NET run, and let's see what happens. Hello, John. Hello, world. Hello, John. Which is not unsurprising. Okay, but it's one way to get data into our program, so that's nice to be able to do that. Um, so we can we can uh, we can play with that. The, the, this one is slightly different. I think I said there were two different programs, but I, I think they are pretty much the same program. Um, so we can uh, you can ignore that duplication. Um, I was obviously trying something different there. Okay. So what's important now is we want to look at some user inputs. So instead of that, we want to get data from the command line interface into our program, and we do this um, unsurprisingly uh, using read line. Okay. We use read line to write and read line to to uh, to Output. Again, I'll copy this particular app here, head over to Visual Studio Code. I'll just replace the contents, save it. And now what I hope to be able to do is I have something to write my name, pick up uh, uh, that's that input, assign it to a string called a name using console.readline, and then output this. So let's run this. My name is John. So that worked just fine, okay? So that, that that's easy, okay? And um, but we're not just interested in dealing with strings. Sometimes we want to be able to deal with with other data types. So let's have a look at this. We can pull in other data. We're interested in this particular program. I'll just copy it across again to Visual Studio Code, um, and now I'm interested in trying to take some integers into my into my um, application. So I'm interested, so I set up a string, which is going to be some integer string. I'm going to um, put a, a notification, say enter an input, capture that string using console.readline, do the conversion using convert to integer 32 um, on that string and assign it to a, an integer variable and then output that variable. You'll notice here that I'm using interpolation. So I'm saying the zero to element, the zero to element in the list um, following this string, you know, um, inside the chain brackets will be placed here. So it's just a way of doing interpolation. So let's go to Visual Studio Code, run this one, and see what happens. Um, let's go in here, .NET run. And now I'm expected to enter an integer. Okay, so 12, your, your input is 12. Okay, so look, what happens, you know, the, if you're thinking about these things, we want to do this again, run this program, and let's type in something that isn't an integer, like we, or whatever, and I get some errors, okay, which is what we would expect, because it's not an integer, it's trying to do some conversion, so it's trying to parse the number, and find it can't, because it's not, so really, so you don't, you know, how do you deal with this, okay, so the best way a good way to deal with this um, is to actually change the program and use some try and catch blocks on the error. So it's the way you, you've done this, I presume, with Java as well. So, you know, we look and we do the conversion. We assume the conversion will work. If it works, it does. If it doesn't work, we catch the exception, the error, and we, um, we, we let the user know that there was an error. So let's copy this piece of code. So um, the best thing to do, of course, is always to try to do some validation. On your inputs. So again, I'm, I have this program running here. It's just using a try and catch. And you, you know, I mean, you would have seen these in Java, try, catch, finally. Um, and it generates an exception object here, which we can manipulate. We're not doing anything with that object currently, but it's fine. So let's, let's save this. Let's um, run the program again. Let's, let's clear the time and get rid of the error. And we'll go .NET run. Now it's telling me I'm not doing anything with that, that variable, which is nice to have that. And um, we could process the error and do something with the error, but it's okay. Um, subsequent runs of this program won't generate this warning. Okay, so I'm going to generate an error again. I'll just type in we again. And now it tells us that input we is not an integer. And we can run our other check. Let's do it once more. I'll put in 12. 
and your input as well. So now we can see how we can do some management. And what's really important for us when we're developing console applications is that we um, validate our data. We can get data from the keyboard, we can get it from the command line, but either ways, we can get data into our application and it will work just fine for us. Okay, so that's pretty much everything you need to know to get started with console applications. Thank you very much for watching.